In this video, we're going to talk about some other theorems regarding triangles. So one theorem is that in any triangle, the longer side is going to be opposite the largest angle, and the smallest angle is going to be opposite the smallest or the shortest side. So that's basically the idea of the theorem here is that um, the longer side is going to open up to the largest angle and smallest will be across from the smallest angle. So in order to be able to do this though, in order to be able to determine which side or angle is going to be the longest or the shortest, you always want to make sure you know all three sides and all three angles because you can't really know which um, side or angle is going to be the longest without knowing everything. So that's a caution here that to make note of. So in this first example, we want to name the smallest and largest angle in this triangle. So the smallest angle will be across from the smallest side. So you go to the smallest side, which is 4, and across from that is going to be L. So the smallest angle will be angle L. And then the largest is going to be across from the largest side. So across from the largest side is going to be angle J, which makes perfect sense because the largest angle would have to open to the largest side because the side length um, is how far the angle has to open. So if it's the longer one, well, that means that the angle is going to open up longer. So that would be angle J. So then the next example is doing the opposite. So find the smallest and largest side or the shortest and longest side. So before you can do that, though, we're missing some information. I can't find which angle is the biggest or the smallest without knowing all three angles. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find this missing angle. So to do that, you're just going to subtract or add these two up and subtract them from 180 or just subtract both from 180. So 180 minus 48 minus 23. So I get 109 for that. So this picture is definitely not drawn to scale, which can happen, so just be careful of that. So that means the smallest angle then is going to be the 23. So if you go across from that, this side right here is going to be the shortest side. So the shortest side will be side ST or TS. And then the largest will go to the biggest angle and go across from it. The biggest angle is 109. Across from that is this side here. So the longest side will be TU or UT. So that's one of the theorems. The other theorem deals with the sides of any triangle. So we talked about Pythagorean theorem, which is the sides for right triangles. But what happens if you want to know a missing side of any triangle. So here's the part that sometimes confuses people is that you can never give an exact answer for a possible third side um, of just any triangle. So we have something called the triangle inequality theorem which says that in any triangle the sum of any two sides is greater than the length of the third side. So all I know is that if I have any triangle, I know that any two sides will always have to add up and be a bigger number than the third side. That's the only relationship we know. There's not a specific number that all the sides add up to. We know all the angles add up to 180, but there's not a specific number for side length. And there's also not just a specific formula that's going to give you one answer. So we can only give like a range of possible side lengths for any triangle. So if we look at the examples, if the side lengths of a triangle are 9 and 12, so that's all we know, write an inequality, so that means a range of numbers to represent the possible lengths of the third side. So there's not just one answer. It's not like Pythagorean theorem where you just plug in and you find the one answer. It's you're going to give a range of possible numbers. So if you have 9 and 12, what are the possible side lengths? So the easiest way to think of a problem like this is... Um, to kind of use this formula that comes from the theorem, which is that the third side, so this is kind of like a formula, has to be less than the sum of the other two, but greater than the difference. So if you look at ex this example, if I want to know what's the inequality to represent the possible side lengths for the third, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two numbers, 9 and 12, I'm going to add them, 
and then I'm going to subtract them. And when I subtract them, you always want to do big minus small. You don't want any negatives here. So when you add them, you get 21. When you subtract them, you get 3. So that means any number greater than 3 but less than 21 could be a possible third side. So like I said, you don't get an exact answer. You're getting a range of possibilities. So the third side has to be greater than 3 but less than 21. So that would be your answer to this question. Now, not equal to those, because if they're equal to those, it won't work. It has to be greater than 3, but less than 21. So 4, 4.5, any decimals, um, anything greater than 3, but less than 21 would form a triangle and make it so that the sum of any two sides is greater than the third. The last one here, you actually just use the theorem. So which set of numbers could represent the side lengths of a triangle? So that just means the sum of any two must be greater than the third. So if I look at the first example here, the sum of any two must be greater than the third. So the first two added together is greater than the third. But if I take these and I add 11 plus 8, that's not going to be greater than 19. It's equal to 19. So this one wouldn't work. If I do this one, same thing. 11 plus 5 is greater than 5. But if I do 5 plus 5, that's not going to be greater than 11. So that doesn't work. Um, this one, 8 plus 4 is greater than 3, but if I do 4 plus 3, that's not greater than 8, so that one doesn't work. These are supposed to be not greater. It kind of looks like a backwards angle symbol. So then the last one, does that work? So check it. 20 plus 19, that's greater than 16. 19 plus 16 is greater than 20. And then these two, 20 plus 16 is greater than 19. So basically the sum of any two will always be greater than the third. So that would be your answer. So that's using the triangle inequality.